Hey everyone, I'm Madison Cox. I am a swimmer on the US national team. I grew up in Lubbock, Texas, trained there until I decided to go to college at the University of Texas. Um, competed there for my four years and have been swimming pro since then. Um, I've been loving it. I've been very fortunate um, to represent the United States on many international teams, um, one of which is the World Championships team in 2017, where I won an individual bronze medal and a relay gold medal. And I am training now for Tokyo 2021. I am Michael Raziel. As you just heard, we have Madison Cox on. She is an Olympic hopeful for the 2020, now 2021 Olympic Games. We're very excited to chat with her. Madison, how are you doing today? I'm doing all right, you know, living living my life, doing as best I can. Doing as best as we can, hanging in. I hear that one a lot, exactly. too, uh, doing what we can. But we appreciate you representing the United States. We appreciate what you've done. And what is it going to look like if you throw an extra year into the mix? And a lot of people just think, all right, big deal. So you push it off by a year, but that's not quite how it works. There's a 2020, you're going to retire or at least stop competing at the highest of levels and go to medical school. Now, with the Olympics in 2021, that now becomes a huge life decision. Do you push off medical school? Do you not try and go to the Olympics? So uh, I was very excited to have you on. So talk to us. Like, what is So before you tell everybody what that decision was, and I'm sure a lot of people can quickly Google it and find it out, <laughs> but... What was that process like? Who are you talking to? Why are you talking to them? And how are how are these conversations going, especially initially finding out that the Olympics are postponed for a year? Yeah, yeah, that it it was it was honestly it was tough. The first day I got the news and I kind of I kind of expected it. You know, it wasn't just like an out of the blue, like this huge surprise. I, I kind of had an inkling that it was um, that was, you know, what was going to happen. And I, I supported the decision. Absolutely. It, it was what is best for, you know, the world at this time. Um, with that being said, it was still very hard. You know, like you mentioned, it it really threw a huge wrench in my plans. I had everything kind of planned out perfectly. You know, we, we planned things in quads four years in advance. So I had this plan, you know, four years ago, and I've been setting myself up the best I can for these past four years. Um, so, you know, when I first heard the news, I kind of just took some time. My roommate is actually an Olympic hopeful in diving. She's in extremely incredible diver. So um, I was very grateful to have her with me kind of in this process and kind of processing emotions together um, and just talking through what what we were going through. Um, when it came to the actual decision making, I uh, mostly consulted with my coach, Carol Capitani, as well as my parents, um, who've just been supporting me, you know, throughout this entire journey. Um, and, you know, they, they really left this, this decision up to me, you know, they didn't want to push me either way, force me, you know, in, in anything, but they were really there to help me rationalize my thoughts. And that was, um, I was very appreciative of that. Um, and you know, what we ultimately, we, we, what was the biggest deciding factor was I can, I can swim for one more year. You know, that, that is, this is my timeline with, with swimming. This is it. After this, there's no going back to it. You know, like I have all my life to be a physician. I have all my life to work in the medical field and to pursue my dreams there. But I've already, you know, committed these 20 years here. What's another one more year when I have the rest of my life for this other career path? So um, that that's really what it boiled down to. And um, I just I just wasn't ready to to give up everything I've worked for, everything I've, um, you know been building towards. And also, um, I, I still want to like pay it back to the people that got me here. Right. Like that's what sports are about. That's what's, um, so incredible and kind of like, um, what makes the sport meaningful. So I really wanted to make sure I, I was also doing this for, you know, my coaches, my parents, family, everything, people that got me here. And, and I'm sure they appreciated the heck out of that. Cause you're right. Like you put in so much time, so much effort and for yourself too. Right. Don't forget about you. So obviously, as you said, you, you picked medical school and, and I understand the argument for that. What was the, or, um, I'm sorry, you picked the Olympics and we understand mm -hmm. the argument for that. What was the argument to go, you know, say, you know what, the, it was a great idea, but it's probably just time to start my life. Yeah, that was, I mean, I've already, I'm, so I'm, I graduated college in 2017. So, you know, I, I feel like I'm already pushing it back. I keep pushing it back. And there's, I just, you know, I'm at this point in my life where I really do want to start that next journey. I, I've loved swimming. I love the process. Um, it's a grueling sport though. Like it, it is not like this fun sport that you just like want to go into and just like have a good time and just chat with friends and like be super social. Like it's a really hard sport. And I remember, I mean, this past Christmas training, Christmas training is like our huge big block of training where you really put in the work and it's, it's, it's 
like daunting even thinking about it. And I remember this past one being like, that was it. That was my last one. Like, thank God I am done with this. Right. And then that was one of my thoughts. I was like, oh my gosh, I have to do that again. Like I have to get up for the next 365 days, put my heart and soul into this kind of it's, and it's vulnerable too. Right. Like, it's like, you kind of have to put yourself out there and kind of, and just go all in. It's not like a, you know, I'll put a little bit in, I'll go half in, you know, it, it's like an all in kind of thing, risking it all. And there is a chance, like there's a chance that I, I do all this. I wait these four years after I finish my eligibility. I, I put my life on hold for this long and yeah, and I, I could not make it, but I kind of just rationalize it saying, you know what, I, it, it's worth it for me. It's worth, it's worth doing that because you know, my, my, my dreams are, you know, that big enough that for, for it to justify it. And, um, even if I, you know, I've also had this thought, even if I don't make it, it'll still be worth it. You know, it's been an incredible journey. I've learned so much about myself. Um, I've grown a lot as a, as a person. And I think I needed these years also to kind of prepare myself, um, for medical school for this next chapter in my life. And I think I'll go into my next, um, this next chapter, a uh, much more mature, better leader, better just person. Um, so I'll, I'll be grateful for these years and, and what they've taught me, I think, regardless of the results. I, I think that's an awesome answer. With that, you know, you, you talked a little bit about hearing about it and it wasn't too surprising. One thing that we kind of have to add to your story a little bit, and we might have buried the lead, was you were suspended from your sport for six months, if I'm not mistaken, from a mm -hmm. tainted multivitamin that then popped up on a drug test and you tested negative. There was then a significant amount of legal battles. There was a significant amount of trauma and a significant amount of just hardship and, and, and frustration and stress on your life that if you then did all of that to get back in the sport, to try and go to the Olympics yeah. and then say, you know what, now I'm going to go to medical school. I think everybody would have just told you were crazy. I mean, how much of that <laughs> was part of the decision to say, like, I did all of that to just say, you know, that was fun, but let's move on to the next chapter, as you said it. How much of that really weighed down on uh, on what you were thinking? That was, that was definitely part of it. And I think that was more... I think that was maybe more of a subconscious decision. I know, um, you know, that chapter in my life was a big one. And I, yeah, again, I, I think I grew a lot from that. And when I'm talking about my growth in this, this, you know, four years since I graduated, a lot of it came from having to go through that and, you know, um, the, the trauma that was involved there. But, um, but I, I, I don't, I was trying to make the decision kind of independent of that and not letting, you know, that time in my life have any kind of precedent or dictate what's going to happen in my future. I'm really trying to just move past it, like, you know, learn from it, um, be grateful for going through it. I, that took a long time to just be like, I don't know why this happened. I don't know why I was, you know, why I was screwed like this, like that. It just, it's so unfair on so many levels, but I'm just trying to look at it from a frame of mind of just gratitude for, um, you know, getting through it, for having the support of getting through it. And then, um, and I, I think even then, even if I decided to, to give it up and just, and just go to medical school, I, I would still, um, have been glad I swam this past, um, year and a half, you know, I, I, it took a lot of courage for me to get back up on the blocks after that. And I, I did learn a lot about myself and grow during that time. So, um, Olympics or not, you know, even if somehow they get canceled this year, whatever happens and get postponed again, you know, um, I'll, I'll be, a, I'll have been grateful for that time and grateful that I decided to continue swimming and, and kind of persevere through all of that. Yeah. I mean, the courage that it took, I mean, just the strength it took to get through that. I mean, you absolutely have become a stronger, tougher person because of it. Now, obviously, we wouldn't wish that upon anybody, but if yeah. it happens, it happens. You kind of just have to roll with it. And clearly, you were capable of doing that. And you come out the other side a little bit stronger, which was a little bit about what's it like finding out about 15 months before the games that you're not the, the date has now shifted. What does that do to your training to get people like what are you now doing to make sure that? you're, you know, you can shift everything 15 months essentially. So that way mm -hmm. next year you're peaking at the correct time. Yeah, it, it was definitely hard. I mean, we were right, right when it got postponed was when we were about to start tapering, which means, you know, coming down in the yards, really honing in on the, the, the little fine tunes, fine tuning bits of it, uh, making sure we we're explosive, everything like that. We were really going to start um, that process. And I think, um, I know for me and my coach, our, our plan was just take a little bit of a mental break. I mean, it's so Olympic years are so hard because it's so high stress and every day, everything you put in your body, everything you do. I mean, there's like conscious decisions regarding the, every bit of your life. You live your life at this high level, especially on Olympic years. And so 
um, for us, we decided we needed a little bit of a mental break, right? If, if we're going to reset and really go for the next 15 months, we had to take a little bit of time away. So I did that. Um, I went home for eight weeks, actually. Um, I was in the water a little bit, but really just trying to like, just, just kind of recover and recharge and reset and, and really get mentally ready to, to go these next, you know, 13 months straight and really, um, grinding again and, and getting in the yards and getting back to where, you know, we were, we, we needed to be, um, you know, at this time, uh, uh, you know, next year. Mm -hmm. So, um, it, that, that was really a key part, I think. And, and this is also, it's so unprecedented. You know, we didn't know, we don't know, we don't have a training path to follow. So I, th I think it's also really individualized on what, what you need as a swimmer and what your coach and you decide um, y'all need. I mean, that that's the most important thing. But then right now it's just, it's just ramping back up and, and getting that base um, again, you know, getting ready for next summer and it, it's it's hard and like i said unprecedented so you don't really know what to do you know other quads you just do the you see what happened the last four years and you implement that for the next four years and do something a little bit better but um this, this is definitely going to be a weird year um but i think if if we do it correctly i think it, it i think it could still be great yeah i'm very confident that's still going to be great and it's still going to be as we said before very worth it and how do you feel about this extra year of training do you think it's it's going to push you ahead that much further to give you that better chance, that better opportunity, that better shot to make the games? Yeah. I, I mean, I think, I think we were in a good position um, this year and I think this next year of training, we just got to put our heads down and I got to just accept that it's, it is what it is. It's going to happen. I need, you know, I have to redo the the Christmas training. I have to redo all the, the hard practices, all the, the hardest practices I've ever had. I'm going to, they're, they're still ahead of me. So I have to accept that. I have to, um, get prepared for it, get excited about it. That's the other thing. I have to have the right frame of mind going into it. Um, and I think as long as we do that, it, it'll really be a great year. And yeah, even better than, than it could have been this year. Very excited for you there. And in terms of medical school, because again, you know, we, we're, you're, as you said, and you've graduated college in 2017. So essentially you're mm -hmm. waiting four more years until, you know, fall of 2021 to go to medical school. What does that do in terms of being a student? Um, like how, how is that go? How do you feel that's obviously you don't know. So how do you feel that's going to affect you as a student kind of taking not four years off? Obviously you've been doing some stuff in that time, <laughs> but try and ease yourself in or, or kind of just figure yourself back out when it does, when it does come time to go back to school. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good question. And, um, something I'm both nervous and excited about. So, after I graduated, I really just started studying for the MCAT after that. And so I, then I, for the next, you know, year I was prepping for the MCAT. And then I had this year off where I was really just going to focus on training. And then my plan was going to go straight into medical school. And I thought that was a perfect um, amount of time. You know, I was still studying for the MCAT. I had one year off, but that year was really just preparing me um, for the workload that medical school um, had in store. You know, it's, I, I really, I really admire the people who go straight from undergrad to med school. That, that's a, that's a lot. I don't know how they do it, but major props to them. For me, I needed some time this extra year. Um, I definitely, you know, didn't want that obviously didn't plan for that. Um, so I actually am starting my master's in public health this August and we'll work towards that. So I think that'll be um, a good way to, you know, get my, dip my toes back in, um, get studying again. And also something that I'm really passionate about and excited for. So I, I think that'll, this will, it's, you know, it's going to work. It's, it's not plan A. It's not even plan B. It might be plan Z, but it's going to, it's going to work and we're going to, um, you know, make the most of it. It's the plan now. And we're going to execute <laughs> it to the most, the best of our ability. Um, I'm, I'm very excited for you, Madison. So thank you so much again for coming back on Madison Cox, 2021 Olympic swimming, hopeful all around great person. Really appreciate your time today. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me on.